If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. Kind of a strange place, don't you think, to be starting out one of our television programs? Howdy everybody, I'm Keith Warren and this week Deer and Wildlife Stories comes to you from just outside of Waco, Texas at the little town of Robinson. And we'll be visiting with the folks over at Brown Trophy Whitetail Ranch. And the cool thing about their place is that it's located right behind the football bleachers. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. This is the very first time that I've visited this deer farm. I've been looking forward to coming here for many, many years. And the reason why is that the location that this deer farm is in is a whole lot different than any other deer farm I've ever been to. My name is Bryce Beatty, I'm here with Brown Trophy Whitetail Ranch. We're in the heart of a little town called Robinson, Texas. What makes us unique is our location being right next to a, a very busy highway, a subdivision, and high school football field. This is a perfect example of that you don't have to have rural property to have a deer farm. I mean, there's houses here, there's a high school there, there's a highway right here, traffic all around. And right here, there's a successful deer farm. All right, so we've got yearlings in this pen, and I mean, there's some really nice yearlings. That one right there, I mean, he's real pretty. He's got some spread, but, has, well, that guy right there's not a yearling. No. What's the story on him? No, that's, Keith, that's, a, that's actually a four-year-old. So last year, these yearlings obviously were fawns, and he was damaged, and when we cut him off, we couldn't put him back in the pen with his buddies because yeah. he would've got, he would've got beat up. Yep. So we had to make a, a, a the right decision and put him in with, with fawns, and obviously he just, he grew out with the, with these yearlings now so he's well, a four-year-old i'm looking at some of these yearlings and, and i know all of them have got great genetics mm -hmm. and so as, as you may be looking at these yearlings go man that's a good one that's a good one that's a knothead that's a good one don't count the knotheads out i'm just telling you do not do it as a deer breeder we know that knotheads when they've got great genetics tell them what happens well i mean they just they, they're surprises you know it's, it's like christmas morning when you open that gift it, it's it, they just blow up. Yeah. I mean, when you've got the pedigree stacked as well as they've got them stacked here, I mean, there really is no telling what's going to happen when they hit two years old. And so the truth of the matter is that although he may be one of the best ones in the pen right now at one, at two, he may just not even be a standout at all. One of the smaller ones may be a standout. So, well, do you wind up selling yearling bucks? Um, very, very seldom. Okay, and the reason why is I know I can finish it because one of these may grow up to be the biggest deer on earth. And you think, the biggest deer on earth? Come on! Yep, and we're going to show you in a little bit what could be the biggest deer ever grown ever on earth. If y'all want more information about Brown Trophy Whitetail Ranch, give them a telephone number. Contact me at 254-717-5797. Alright, let's Man, go see dandy. some two-year-olds. Yes, on, sir. Man. Let's go. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this is off our Facebook page from a viewer by the name of Jerry. He's from Oklahoma. 
says, I love your show and someday want to be a deer farmer. Until then, I'd like to get into exotic animals. What would you recommend for a guy that has 30 acres of really good habitat that holds only a four foot goat wire fence? Jerry, I would recommend black buck antelope for many reasons. First off, they're beautiful. Uh, they're easy to raise, very adaptable. Um, you can make a lot of money on them. There's a big market for black buck antelope. Plus at the same time, I have never seen one jump a four foot fence. So I think black buck would be a great animal for you. If you have a question for me like Jerry, all you need to do is get a hold of me on Facebook or go to our website and hit the Connect with Keith tab. So how many two-year-olds you have in here? We've got about 42 in this There's pen. that many in here? Yes, sir. Wow, they're, look how calm they are. It really amazes me. See, right now these deer they literally are on the verge of uh, getting hard antlered real quick. I mean, they'll come out of the velvet overnight. When they start losing the velvet, their behavior changes. Tell them what happens with their behavior. Oh, they just, they act a little bit on the crazy side. They, they feel good. They actually, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll trot around the pen and at first sight, you think you, that something's wrong with them. And it, like they're sick or something, but all it is is they actually, it's a, a good sensation to them. To okay, these deer right here, all right, do you have any of these guys sold? Uh, normally on our two-year-olds, um, I just sell breeders out of this pen. And okay. we do have a couple sold as breeders. Yeah, I was gonna say, you got a couple in here that are studs. Yeah. I mean, they, they need to be breeding. But yes, uh, So what will you wind up doing with the, the rest of them? You're gonna hold them off till they're three. Explain what you're gonna do to them. That's right, so we'll take our fair share of breeders out of this pen as well that we obviously don't sell, that we're holding back for ourselves. But the, the rest will grow out next year as three-year-olds and see how they do and, and maybe even at three uh, pick some superstars and then the rest will go to uh, benefit other operations. So what happens, uh, y'all wind up selling to both uh, deer breeders and landowners that want to have these good genetics. So I know there's a lot of breeders that wind up oh, using yeah. your stuff to, to help improve what's in their pens. Uh, but when you keep these bucks over and say you're going to hold these two-year-olds, whatever two-year-olds, until they're three, or your yearlings and hold them over to their two. Do you cut the antlers off, and if so, why? Yes, we remove all the antlers on all the bucks that we don't uh, we don't sell, and the reason behind that is simply safety and health of the animals. You know, that's first and foremost what we do here. Is we want to get you know, we want to make sure that our animals uh, can stay healthy and stress free. And if we do not remove the antlers on the bucks, they will they'll fight to the death. Yeah, as, as you're sitting here looking at these guys right now, you wind up uh, thinking, I mean, they're all bunched up together, and I mean, they're docile and calm, but uh, as soon as they get hard antlered, they're not docile and calm. You know, speaking of antlers, I know when you cut them off, you wind up hanging them up in the barn. That's right. Okay, and uh, the centerpiece in the barn, I say, is the American flag. And I want you to talk about that for a second. Well, um, you know, that's, that's kind of an emotional, um, subject for me because it means so much you know and uh, you know that's that's a major part in uh, in my life is family and, and the american flag and these animals that put food on the table for our families i did not mean to throw one at you that you weren't expecting but folks i want you to know something when i got here and i walked in that barn i was so proud i saw all the antlers up there and that's a cool deal but to see the american flag hanging Front and center is a centerpiece in that barn. It's just pretty dead gum incredible. And I want to tell you, thank you for, for doing that. That's yes, a pretty sir. cool, pretty cool setup. So if you come to Brown Trophy Whitetails, you're gonna see that American flag hanging in there, along with the hundreds and thousands of other deer antlers, but uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yes, sir. <laughs> I really like that buck right there. Yes, sir. He's got some mass on him for sure. All right, well, these guys, most of them are probably gonna wind up being held over till next year. Yes, sir. Other than, like I said, there's a handful of breeders that are getting sold and, and then the, the breeders that I'll choose to breed with this year. Other than that, you'll see them next year. Okay. All right, well, let's go take a look at your three-year-olds now. Rock and roll, let's go. All righty. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at deerandwildlifestories.com. So all of them are three-year-olds? This whole pen is three-year-olds, Keith. Look at that guy right there. What a frame on him. Monster. Goodness. Yes, sir. All right, so what's the deal on these guys? I mean, uh... This entire pen is actually sold um, to a rancher that came in and uh, 
he basically was overhunted. He overhunted last year and he didn't have anything left to, uh, but inferior genetics on his pasture. So we were able to sell him this whole entire group of bucks. See, that's the one thing I, I, I really think that deer farmers get a bad rap thinking that these deer, all of them get sold and just get shot. That is not the case, okay? These deer, trophy hunting has really helped the deer farmer. I mean, think about that. For sure. You know, when trophy hunting takes place, they wind up shooting the biggest of the big genetics. And when they do that, they leave the inferior genetics to do the breeding. And so they call guys like Bryce up and say, hey, uh, can you help me out? So what's cool is that you're able to handle packages all the way up to delivering bucks like this, right? 100% correct. Okay, so if somebody wants to buy just one deer, would you just sell one deer? Absolutely. Well, okay, or, or what, 20 at one time? That's right. 20, wow. 40, whichever. 20 or 40? I mean, then you got does that you'd wind up selling too, because the pins are just full of does as well. And so the bucks, take a look at these guys. Uh, it's, they're calm. It looks like a buck parade, these guys coming through. One big one after the other. And so when you start taking a look, you think, okay, I like that one and that one and that one. And as a hunter, I'd like to be able to see more of that in the pasture and that in the pasture. And you can't see more of that in the pasture if you wind up killing them. You have to let them go. And so as you let these guys go, they're going to produce the offspring. They're going to breed the does that are out there and produce better offspring with characteristics like that. And consequently, it increases the property value. And that's the, that's the thing that I look at. So when, when people wind up coming to Brown Trophy Whitetails, I mean, like I said before in this show, is that uh, Brown Trophy Whitetails is known for growing bone. I mean, big bone, lots of it. And, uh, and the Gen X are stacked over and over and over. And so it's for that reason that these deer right here are gonna help one rancher that had the wherewithal to come out here and purchase the entire group and put on a piece of property. So at, uh, at this point now, tell everybody, I mean, we're, we're right now at the last of August. It's uh, the very last of the month and the bucks are basically grown out. So tell them kind of the process, what'll happen to move these deer to another ranch. Okay, so what will happen to all these bucks, we will go through um, and we will tranquilize every one of them, score every one of them, um, and ensure that they are good, healthy animals, and then they will be delivered to the, the buyer. Okay. And, uh, and the score is, is merely just a- uh, Just so you know. Just so we know for record keeping right. purposes. And uh, and for, because the particular buyer who bought this entire pen also bought a, a, a large package, a doe package. That's good. So we want to try to mix and match kind of what we know uh, with pedigree wise. And so it can do nothing but, but uh, do good things for him in the future. As you can see, I mean, these deer are pretty incredible. And uh, this place is incredible. When you take a look at it, I mean, we've got a football field and stadium right there, and we've got a major road right here, and a subdivision right here, and we got lots of big deer right there, and they're nice and calm. So Bryce, if somebody wants more information about coming out here and looking at some of the deer, calling you up just to talk to you about the deer, give them a phone number. Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to talk to somebody, consult however, 254-717-5797. All right, so now that we've shown you some three-year-olds, we're gonna show you the breeder bucks that these guys came from. What do you say? Absolutely, let's, let's do, do it. it. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. We were on our way to take a look at the breeder bucks and all of a sudden, whoa, 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 who are these two guys here? So that, his name is R Recon. Okay. And then the other one is a three-year-old named Revenge, both of which, obviously, without their headgear on, we had to cut them early for their well-being and their, their health. Um, and I, again, Revenge, he's the one that, he's big. How big was he? Well, you haven't actually had him officially scored, but I'm thinking he could be 700 plus. Do you still have his antlers? We do. All right, where are they? They're in the fr in the freezer, All in right. the barn. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the breeder bucks first, and then we're gonna go show you Revenge's antlers. Well, there is no need for binoculars on this pen. No, sir. Holy cow, so mm -hmm. these are the breeders. Who is that buck right there, the great big wide one with the drops? He is beautiful. That's, that's super duty. Really? Five-year-old stout buck. What a moose of a buck. I mean, that guy right there, so was he born on this place? Born and raised on this place, Keith. Really? Yes, sir. The rest of them in here, were they born on this place? Every buck you see in this pen is born and raised on brown trophy white tail dirt. See, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, these guys, they are known for growing big bones. I mean, you take a look at this. I mean, 
That guy right there, how old is he? Uh, that's actually a, a three-year-old. No way. Three-year-old we call recoil. Recoil. Yes, sir. My gosh. That, the mass on that guy right there is just like, it's unheard of. That's Blue Diamond. He's really? A, he's a five-year-old and he's, he's known to throw just nothing but mass, mass, mass. Okay, so uh, these deer out here, these breeder bucks of yours, at what age did you determine that you wanted to start breeding them? When they're two years old, we know that they're going to be breeding. Oh my gosh, I just, I, I'm sitting here looking at these guys and going, I, which one's my favorite? I don't know. I mean, I'm the kind of guy, I really like clean, typical deer, but it is hard not to like Super Duty. Yes, sir. I mean, that guy right there, he's got it all. He, he literally, he's got it all. I mean, every one of you, that, that's the cool thing about white-tailed deer. You stack them full of these genetics and it's like, there's really no telling what they're gonna look like. I mean, they, you know you know they're gonna get big, at least when you come here and put it on brown dirt, they're gonna get big. And, uh, and that, what is it? Your phone just keeps going off and well, off. Well, that's, that's that surprise I was talking about. Okay, but first, let's head to the barn because I do want to see those cut off. For sure, let's go. All right, we just left the breeder pen and we showed you a buck that had his antlers cut off. That buck's name is Revenge. This is what his antlers look like. Now, they got video of Revenge back before they cut him off, and uh, he was a beast of a deer. And this could be perhaps the biggest white-tailed deer that has ever been grown, period, anywhere in the world. He had a 41-inch spread. If you take a look at this antler, it is huge, massive, and it weighs a lot. His right antler over here weighed more than 25 pounds. Take a look at that. That sucker right there is huge. Again, Brown Trophy Whitetails is known for growing big deer, pushing lots and lots of bone. This deer revenge is alive and well in the pen. We just showed him to you. And he's proof that they're getting it done right here at Brown Trophy Whitetails. Well, clearly you've got Pier Davids and uh, all kinds of other exotics out here. Tell everybody what they are. Yes, sir. So obviously, yeah, the Pier David are behind us here, and we've got some the Oryx here that, that are one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, just their temperament, laid back, and then uh, the fallow deer are, are a big hit for us as well. All dad are they're more of a, a hobby than anything. <laughs> yeah. But you wound up dealing with breeders, right? That's right. Yeah, a lot of some of this stock. Uh, comes from other breeders. So how did you get them all in here? Well, the ones we get from the breeders, we live loaded on the trailers. Yeah. Now the other ones, that's that surprise I was talking about. We trapped them. Really? Yes, sir. You want to go see the trap system? Yeah, man, let's go. Let's do it. I love trapping. That's a pretty cool contraption. Now, how big is it? Uh, this one is about, it's actually on the smaller scale. It's only about 50 feet across. Maybe 60, I didn't measure it, but. So you've got a camera right here that has tilt, zoom, and pan on it. Then. Correct. That's so you right. can use it to see whatever's in the pen. And mm -hmm. then you sell this entire system, right? That's got a eight foot panels, what they're 12 foot long? That's correct, yeah. Okay, and so then you've got the, like the door right here. I mean, this door, then you wind up. There you go. Yep, just so like that. So you can discharge it just whenever you want. That's right. And, via, uh, via cell phone, all you do is, is in the app, you press one button and it's seconds. Okay, so if somebody wants more information on this, give them a phone number to call you. You bet, 254-717-5797. Now I want to point something out. If you're in Texas, you're able to, uh, with a permit, you can have what they call DMP deer. Okay, and DMP deer, what they are, they'll deal with somebody like Bryce and they'll, uh, they'll get a buck, but they put him in with the native does that are on that pasture. Well, the one great way to catch those native does is like this. I mean, you can sit there. So this is hooked up to, to Wi-Fi. You can get on your telephone, I guess on the computer That's as well. Correct. And so watch it. That is pretty doggone slick. Now, so how do you catch them up once they're in here? So once, once the animals are caught inside the trap, we, there's actually a loadout system um, back behind this wing here. You, um, all you do is, is you kick this wing out and uh, when this wing is, is actually out, it, it acts as a, a funnel. Then you would walk around, obviously the trailer would be backed up here to load animals out. This will open and uh, the animals just come around here and load right up. And you take them wherever you want them. Take them wherever. How slick is that? So what do you call this system? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's, we just call it an exotic trap. Okay, you know? but, it, but it works equal as well as a white-tailed deer? Anything. God, Any wildlife. Yep. cool. Yep. How cool is that? If you have any questions or comments about today's show, make sure and follow me on Facebook and you can post questions there. 
or get a hold of me on my website. If you want to get a hold of Bryce Beatty with Brown Trophy Whitetail Ranch, we'll have a direct link off of our website to theirs. My name is Keith Warren, and thanks for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories.